Now that I've negotiated masks and <laughs> microphones and able now to greet you all here this morning, a warm welcome to everyone who's here today. It's lovely to see you all and an especial welcome to those who are here to witness Ben's baptism today. It's a joy to have you here with us. I hope you're all comfortable and looking forward to our service today. As we normally do, just take a few moments now to welcome those round about you into the church today. Give them a warm welcome. before we start, a few intimations, and this is firstly to elders, if you haven't already done this, could you pick up the communion invitations from the vestibule. Also, Pat will be outside the church after the service with flat pack shoe boxes, it's getting near that time of year again, and leaflets, and the closing day for handing them in. Sunday the 14th of November. So that's for our shoebox appeal this year. Thank you to all who have donated to the Lodging House Mission for our harvest offering. And if you haven't done this yet, there's still an opportunity. There are Lodging House Mission envelopes available and you'll find those on your way out of church this morning. And if you can if you gift aid, then just fill in the envelopes with your details. You can also go online to the Lodging House Mission, where they will benefit from your donations. The Kirk Session meets tomorrow evening at 7pm on Zoom. And it is with deep regret that I intimate the passing of Sheila Miller. Sheila's funeral service will be here in the church on Friday the 8th of October at 12 noon. I commend her family and her friends to your prayers. Come before God now. Whether happy or sad, confident or scared, strong or weak, content or frazzled, God is listening. Come to God. For no matter your life's experience, your poise or predicament, your preference or pattern, God is listening. Bring your hallelujahs of praise and your complaints. Come to God, for God wants you as you are. In such intimacy, let us come before God today and hold back no prayer or emotion of our heart. God. We come to you today and we begin our service by singing the hymn number 97 in our hymn books, which is an interpretation of Psalm 139. O oh God, you search me and you know me, all my thoughts lie open to your gaze. Let us stand together and worship God this morning. Redeemer, 
You are our light in every darkness, our source and our care. We thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And so we join this day as a family here, certain, yes, and at times uncertain, in awe of your undying love given to us and to all. We come to give thanks for all that you give and all that you do. Glory be to you, our God. Look on us, your children, with care. Pour out your compassion on we who are conscious of our failings, of our inability to always live up to what you desire of us. Forgive us when we fail you and help us to walk in your way, living out your truth and experiencing your life. Help us to know that through your grace we are for forever forgiven, freed to live lives bathed in your love. Glory be to you, God, our strength and our Redeemer, our way, our truth, and our life. Glory be to you. Be with us today as we worship together, as we listen to your words, as we are guided by your Spirit. Hear us now as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our this morning, Beth and David, I ask you, do you declare your faith in God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Let us join together in prayer at this point. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for Ben, for the happiness that he brings to this special day. We thank you for all that Jesus has done for us. And we thank you that through baptism, we are welcomed into your family. Though Ben doesn't know it fully yet, he will one day. And we love you, Lord, because you first loved us. So bless Ben, we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Ben, you're going to need your dad to come to me. You'll be your mum and dad there. Ben, Stephen, McAllister, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you, and may you know his blessing all the days of your life. <laughs> and then you go to daddy. <laughs>
The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. We now stand to sing those words. We come to our Gospel reading today, and it's from John's Gospel, chapter 14. It's a conversation that Jesus has with his disciples. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told him. Believe in God, and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house, and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself so that, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, he said to them, you will know my father also, and from now on you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father, that is all we need. And Jesus answered, for a long time I have been with you all, yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the father. Why then do you show, say, show us the father? Do you not believe, Philip? That I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I have spoken to you, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Whoever believes in me will do what I want, what I do. Yes, he will do even greater things, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask for in my name, so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Amen, and thanks be to God for his words to us this morning. Let us pray. 
Lord, as we come now to listen to a reflection on these words, help us, Lord, to understand and help us to draw closer to you. May you speak, Lord, into our hearts, into our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today is a blessed day. Today is a happy day that we gather to rejoice in the love and mercy of God. Today we give thanks to God for Ben's life and for the love and joy that he has brought and that he brings to his family. And I'm sure he, he will be the centre of attention for the rest of, this, of the day. Love is at the heart of the Christian faith. The Apostle Paul said that it was the greatest of all gifts. He said, love never fails. Imagine a world without love. The Apostle John summed up his understanding of God and wrote, God is love. And he knew this from personal experience. And that personal experience was through his relationship with Jesus. John, after all, was the disciple, we're told, whom Jesus loved. Of course he loved all the disciples, but he had a special bond with John. What did John see in Jesus? Well, in the Gospel of John, John spells it out, and that's our reading today. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I believe that for John, he discovered those aspects of Jesus to be true in his life. Firstly, he came to know Jesus as the way. Jesus, in this passage, was speaking about leaving them and going to heaven. And he spoke about his father's house having many rooms and that he would go and prepare a place for them and come back to them. And he says, you know the way. And Thomas, dear Thomas, you could expect Thomas to ask the skeptical question, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? You know, we need the skeptics in our churches. We need the people who will ask the difficult questions, the searching questions. How can we possibly know the way? If Thomas never asked this question, we would not have Jesus' magnificent reply, Thomas, I am the way. And this is a loaded reply, I am. Probably doesn't mean a lot to us, but to the Jew of that time, they would know exactly what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, God is the way. I am was the name that Moses was given to go back to Egypt and tell God's people, I am. So when Jesus said this, he was saying something that every Jew would know what he meant. God is the way, and it's through me. One of the many challenges that churches today in the Western world are facing is that they are both shrinking and aging as more young people disengage. And over the last year as a church, we have begun a journey here with growing young and Beth and David and Gillian have been very much a part of that journey. And one of the key components of growing young is that we take Jesus' message seriously. Seriously. And today's message gets to the heart of what it is to be a follower of Christ. I am the way, the truth and the life. And this statement embodies what Jesus was, is, and will be. This is getting to the core of Christ's message. He is saying to the disciples, listen, take this message seriously. Thomas, I am the way. Now, you may agree or disagree with me here, but one of the greatest inventions of our time is satellite navigation. It may have got you to the church today. It may have not. <laughs> I 
And most of the time it takes you in the right direction. It is certainly an improvement to the old method, I think, of asking someone for directions. Take the first to the right and the second to the left, past the pub and take the third on the right and the road you want is fourth on the left. You can't miss it. (laughs) And if you are anything like me, and I'm sure we've all been there, to be honest, by the time he gets to the left, I'm totally lost. There was a moment in my first charge in ministry when I went to Springborn Co-op. I was to take a funeral service at the, at the parlor and then on to Mary Hill. And for the first few years of my ministry, it was always that way, Springborn, then Mary Hill. But on this particular day, I arrived at Springborn Parlor in good time to be told when I arrived the service has been held at Duke Street Parlour. Now, a lad from the country who didn't know Glasgow too well, particularly the East End, they told me it would be easy to find. And this is before mobile phones and satellite navigation. And so I headed down. But could I find the parlour? Panic set in. Every second was vital. Have you been in a situation like that or similar when you are desperate to know the way? So I stopped and asked a man if he could point me in the right direction. And he took about three to four minutes, precious minutes, trying to explain where I should be going. I eventually said to him, my friend, would you like to jump into the car? and take me to the parlour, as time was of an essence. You should have seen the look on his face. But he said, okay. And so I was there at the parlour in minutes and in time for the service. Panic over, because someone explained the way and took me on the way. I can only imagine what he told his wife that day, that night when he got home. I was out for a loaf of bread, kidnapped by a minister, and released after the service. (laughs) Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way. I will come back and take you to be with me. And in those majestic words, we have the beginning of the journey of faith. Young people will find it hard today to join an institution. That's a fact. But tell them that there is a way in life that is unique to being a Christian. And it involves a journey. And then we might just catch their imagination. Jesus does not only give advice and directions, he literally takes us by the hand and leads us on the way. He strengthens us and guides us personally every day. He does not tell us about the way. He is the way. And the truth is that we all need a way to walk in. When left to our own desires and our own choices, our way is usually the wrong way. But for those who follow Christ, literally following in his footsteps, you will find that they are walking in God's way. As a young person, I came to faith when I was 19. Before that, I had little interest in the church or religion. Just didn't appeal to me. Wasn't in my radar, wasn't in my thoughts. But someone took the time to introduce me to Christ and explained to me that it was a journey with Jesus on the way. A journey that I would have to invest my life to. That as a 19 year old, Searching and seeking for meaning to life excited me. And so all these years later, I believe that because of that decision, I'm still on the way following Jesus. But Jesus also said, I am the truth. And when we walk in the way, we are walking in the way of truth. Again, many people will tell us about truth, but only one claims to be the truth. 
I know it's a big claim, but that's what Christ claims to be, the truth of God. And there was only one good enough to make this claim, and that was the perfect Son of God who embodied the truth of God. In referring to himself as the truth, he is highlighting that he is the truth that all scriptures and all history were pointing to. Of course, if we read our Bibles, we will discover that it says much more than this, that he describes himself as his source of life and that all things were created through him. Big claims indeed. What is truth, said Pilate, as Jesus stood condemned before him? It is a question that we might ask, what is truth? And little did Pilate realize that before him stood God's truth. Jesus being the truth means that we can stand before him and there is nothing that we cannot ask him. He is the word made flesh, the very word of God. If he is truth, then he is trustworthy and we can depend on him. That's what he was saying to Thomas. I am the way you can trust me, for I am truth. We live in a world where lies and untruths are evident. In all spheres of our society today, there is lies, untruths, people covering up. And we have asked the question, who can we really trust today? It is refreshing to find someone who is the real thing. And what Christ said and what he did matched exactly this we call integrity. And when Jesus says, I am the truth, it is a powerful, exclusive statement. He is saying, you can trust me with your life. But he also said that he was the life. When we walk in the way, when we live in the truth, trusting him, we experience his life. I was down to Tarbert recently, visiting my mum, and there's a small church of Scotland on the banks of Loch Fyne. And outside it, there is a new sign. And believe me, if you travel that road from, Tar from Glasgow to Tarbert often, you will notice a new sign. <laughs> and the new sign outside the church of this old building simply said two words, Jesus lives. And it made me think, wow, they're not advertising church services. They're not advertising everything that goes on in the church. They're making a statement. A statement that in this church, Jesus lives. In Christ, we discover the life of God. We meet with the one who has surrendered his life, entering the water of baptism. Going under signifies us dying to our old ways. Rising from the water signifies newness of life. So friends, today we have gathered, many of us, for Ben's baptism, the beginning of his spiritual journey, a journey that many of us started many years ago also, a journey that we pray he will discover on it Jesus to be his way. Wouldn't that be wonderful? a way through life, that he will discover to Jesus to be someone he can trust, the truth. And he will discover Jesus never to let him down. And he will find Jesus to be his life, that personal friend, that comforter who will journey with him through this world, whatever the world throws in his way, he will find Christ to be his life. What we are doing today is not just a one-off event, not just a lovely occasion, and it is a lovely occasion for the family to join together, but it's the beginning. It's the beginning of a voyage of discovery for a young life. When I get folks coming for baptism today, and we don't get them, get people coming the way it used to be many years ago, where every child was always baptized. But what I hear from parents who bring their children for baptism, we want to give our child values in life. We want to give our child a way 
a direction, a path to be followed. And that encourages my heart because they see in the Christian faith that there is a way to be followed. We all wish Ben every blessing today and I've put him to sleep already. <laughs> As he goes forward with God's blessing upon him. And for us all here today who are on the way, whether we are starting off or whether we are well on our way, <laughs> I had a conversation with my mom, she's not too well, and she said to me the other night, John, my road's coming to an end. <laughs> Mom, it's only beginning. Because <laughs> Christ's way doesn't stop here and now. Christ's ways is for eternity. And perhaps we're here today and we've never really thought about stepping on the way. We've never really thought about stepping out in faith. We've never really thought, is there more to life? Well, I can say there is. And I can say Jesus is worth exploring. Take your time to read about him in the Gospels. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Step out for Jesus today. Trust him. Receive his spirit, which will give you life. Life, Jesus said, in all its fullness. Amen. And thanks be to God. We're going to turn now to hymn 722. 722. Spirit of God, come dwell within me. Open my heart, O oh, come set me free. Fill me with love for Jesus my Lord. Come, fill me with living water. 722. Let us take a few moments now in prayer as we remember the needs of other people. Let us join our hearts now. Gracious God, provider of all things, we come today in your presence to give back to you some of the gifts you have given to us. In this world so often marked by pain and strife, we give you tokens of these gifts in the hope that through the mission and ministry of your church, the light of hope might shine into the darkness of people's lives. Loving God, we thank you today for being in our lives. We thank you for showing us the way to your love. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us. And so today we pray for people today who are searching, searching for your love and your grace. We bring them to you, to you in our prayers. And as we look around our world, we see that things are not the way they should be. We see many people facing hardships, many suffering and struggling in countries where there is turmoil and war. We pray for them today. And throughout the world today, many of your people, many Christians, are walking on a very difficult way, 
a way of persecution. Lord, we pray that you would be with them. And we pray today for all whom we know who are struggling with illness. We thank you for our hospitals and for our doctors and nurses and for those who are there to help people through difficult times. Especially we remember those who are struggling with COVID. And we know, Lord, that this virus is still here. We thank you for our scientists and those who have been working to provide vaccinations and to help us through this difficult time. We pray today for our schools and we thank you for them, for our teachers. We pray for our children, that you would keep them safe. We pray for our congregation here at Cadder Church. We thank you, Lord, for this congregation. We pray for all our members. And we take a moment now to remember those most in need. And Lord, we bring to you those who grieve and we remember the Miller family this week especially and we pray for them and we uphold them in our prayers. So gracious God, we make these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. We conclude our worship this morning with the great hymn 465, Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that thou art. Thou my best thought in the day or the night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. 465. the way, go with us. Lord of truth, send us out to speak for you. Lord of life, help us to share your life. Go now with peace in your hearts. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. <laughs>